Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Autumn Renee and today I'm going to be sharing what we use for homeschooling kindergarten this year. So I'm filming this video at the end of the year to kind of show you guys what we really used, what we really didn't, um, kind of our hits and misses of the year. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So we started um, each day with a calendar time. So I use this little wooden calendar board. I'll try to see if I can find it and link it below. Um, but it just kind of has all the basics, right? It's got the weather. Um, we practice on tailing time on an analog clock, uh, months of the year, days of the week, and the date, um, as well as AM and PM. I just really felt like this covered everything I wanted to cover for kindergarten year for calendar. Um, and I love that I didn't have to like take up wall space or anything like that. Like it's just a simple like little wooden board. It's very sturdy, it held up, and my son loved using it. So this was definitely a hit for us. Next, I'm gonna share what we used for math. So for math this year, we jumped in with math with confidence. So I actually was a little bit nervous about trying this curriculum just because it is a newer curriculum and it hasn't really been time tested. And I just really wasn't sure um, if it really held up. So I grew up on the old school Saxon math um, so I was really unsure if I would like this or not, but I decided to give it a try, and I'm really glad that I did. I honestly wasn't even sure I liked it during like the first six weeks, but I can tell you as you continue to use this curriculum, you really start to see um, some of that spiral review that the curriculum has really, really working out. So um, if you're not familiar with this curriculum, um, it is by the author Kate Snow, and it comes with the student, I'm sorry, the instructor's guide, which is absolutely 100% necessary. This is where uh, the meat of the program is. And then it also comes with a little student workbook for just some additional practice at the end of the lessons. The student workbook I'll show you guys. Um, it's very colorful and fun. It's got lots of different like little activities, um, just doing different fun stuff. I also love that it had these numbers at the top for my son to practice writing his numbers. So I just really enjoyed um, this whole program. I loved the colorfulness of it. I loved that the lessons were really short. Uh, it really only took us about 15 minutes a day to do our math, which I think for kindergarten is about perfect. I do like that when this curriculum moves up into first grade, it does have a little bit more um, to each lesson, which I think is good for older kids to have just a little bit additional review and practice. But for my son for this year, this was just about perfect. Um, the instruction manual is not as colorful, but it is very open and go. So I really did not have to prep much for these lessons. Um, I pretty much just once a week kind of looked over it, made sure there wasn't anything like random that I needed, and I was pretty much good to go. So the lessons are very easy to follow, very easy for me as a teacher to teach. If you're somebody who's kind of worried about teaching your kid math, I feel like this instructor's guide did a great job of showing me how to teach math. I also really like how she teaches math in so many different ways. Like I feel like the big draw for this program is how much my son learned like conceptual math and number sense and just understanding how math works. Like I just, it's been amazing. Um, and it really, and not only that, but it doesn't stop there. Like she, it still goes back and translates it into you know, being able to solve actual math problems with just numbers. So it, I don't know, it just really has a good blend of both. I feel like traditional math and kind of like the newer conceptual math. I just feel like it's a good blend of both. Um, and I can really tell that there was a lot of heart put into this program. Honestly, the only um, con I can really think of is I feel like there was a few lessons that I wish had been a little longer. Um, so like, I feel like if your child didn't get that concept, there wasn't like a whole lot of practice. There were checkpoints within this program where they were like, hey, your kids should have mastered this by now, or it's okay if they haven't mastered it yet. And there were some like additional review games and things there, but I do wish there had been a little bit more for a few of the concepts. But looking forward to the first grade one, I know that almost everything covered in here will be covered again, so I'm not too worried about it. And I will say this is also a very fun program. It's very game-based, very hands-on. So if you have a kid who loves to play games and stuff, this will definitely be a hit for them. So that was what we did for math. That was a hit for us. We will be continuing with Math with Confidence next year. For handwriting, and I will tell you guys, this is my son's struggle subject for sure, handwriting is. Um, he is pretty on the young side for kindergarten. Uh, he turned five just before the year started. And so what we used for kindergarten this year to start was the Kickstart Kindergarten from Handwriting Without Tears. This is technically their pre-K version. 
Um, but I felt like for my son, it was just good for him to start simple. So what I liked about this program is like each page is just a few letters long. So it's just not that much. So we started out just doing one page a day. So he would just trace a few of the letters and then write a few of the letters. And that was it. Very gentle. Um, again, this is something that he really struggles with and uh, can get easily frustrated with. So I wanted it to be gentle. I didn't want to push, especially because I know developmentally children's hand muscles are still developing and stuff at this age. And really it's normal up until age seven for them not to really be writing that much. So um, this is what we did for the start of the year. Once we finished this, we finished it by Christmas. We moved on to the kindergarten level, which was letters and numbers for me. I will say that when we got to about the middle of this book, he started to struggle because I can show you like once you get to the uh, closer to the end, it's more like copying words and sentences. And we were still really struggling with letter formation, guys. So this I, I won't say it's a, a miss for us, but just we weren't ready for it. So I actually put this away. And we did some other things to practice on letter formation. And I actually ended up buying this book again because I really do like this program. Um, and so we're just doing it again for just some additional practice. So that's one of the great things about homeschooling. You can meet your kids' needs where they're at. So that's what we're doing. We will finish this book next year in first grade and then move on uh, to whatever we do next. So that is what we did for handwriting. So for reading, which this was really my big focus for this year, I feel like kindergarten is a big year for kids learning to read. Um, so that was really where my main focus was for this year. So after doing a ton of research and knowing that I wanted a phonics-based program, um, we ended up going with All About Reading. Now this program, I will tell you, was a little bit intimidating um, first jumping into it just because there's a lot of parts. I felt like I watched a lot of YouTube videos where people were like making these like crazy binders and all this insane prep, and it just seemed really impossible to do especially since I am a working homeschool mom um, and I really need things to just be laid out for me. But I will say um, I made this program work for me and I found ways to make it very simple and easy to use. So I'm definitely planning to make a video going more in depth on kind of what we did for this program because I feel like we do it differently than a lot of people here on YouTube. But um, overall, this was definitely a hit for us. Um, it was very successful. I do feel like uh, this level one of All About Reading is very rigorous. It moves very quickly um, and it expects a lot of your child. So I would not start this program until your child is already extremely solid with their letter sounds and is showing lots of pre-reading signs like they're already trying to sound things out and stuff like that uh, because it does move pretty quickly. And even though my son was doing both those things I just named, I still felt like I had to slow this program down a lot to really build on his fluency. Um, so I loved the program, but I do feel like I had to modify it just a little bit. But it was easy to modify, I will say. But again, just like the math program, this was about 20 minutes a day for the lesson. Um, it's very laid out for you as the parent. Also, the teacher's guide is colorful as well. It shows you like pictures of exactly like what you're using. Um, what you're doing. So it was very easy for me as the parent to follow because again, I've never taught a kid to read. I am a certified middle school teacher. Um, by the time kids get to me, hopefully they're already reading. So um, this is something, a new thing for me to learn. So I liked that it really just handheld me, showed me exactly what to say to my student, what to do. Very easy to follow. Um, this program, if you're not familiar with it, also comes with a student activity book. One thing that really drew me to this program was it doesn't have any writing in it for the student. Um, as I just mentioned, writing was kind of a struggle for my student, so I didn't want his writing ability to hold back his reading ability. And so I love that about this. So like all of the like activities in here are like things you can cut out or play games with and do. Um, so they're just they're, they're activities that don't require writing, which is just great for him. Um, we actually have been putting our activities in a little interactive notebook. So this this is we made ourselves. I have copied and printed this off and just glued it on a regular spiral notebook. Um, it comes with a little pocketbook that I have all our stuff in. And this is just where I glued all of our activities. So like this is some of the activities that came out of that activity book. Um, so really cute stuff. Um, stuff my son really enjoyed doing. I definitely was a big fan of the activities for him. I actually wish they had even more activities uh, than they have. So these were definitely a hit for us. We enjoyed it. And then I will say probably the thing I enjoyed the most about the program were the readers. And this is what I've heard from a lot of people too, that these readers are just great. Honestly, I think if I were ever to use a different reading program, I would definitely keep these readers to use. 
Um, so it comes with three different readers. I love them because they're hardback, so they're very durable. They are also like the size of like a real book, so it doesn't feel like they're reading like one of those little like baby books, like it feels like a real book. Um, and the stories are pretty long. Um, I mean, of course they start off pretty simple, like this is like the first one. Um, so obviously it starts pretty simple, but like by the end of this book, let's see if I can find a good page to show you. Um, so by the end of this book, they're reading several sentences on a page, and the stories are several pages long. So they do get pretty long, so they're building those kids' reading stamina, which is good, um, but could be overwhelming for some uh, readers. So I did end up supplementing these a little bit with some like easier readers, just to kind of continue to build his confidence. But we love the stories in these. They were very funny, very engaging. My son really enjoyed them. Um, so that's the first one, and then this is the second one, um, The Runt Pig. And just to kind of show you how this program progresses, um, so here's a page from this one. And then the very last book in the program is called Cobweb the Cat. And when you get to the end of this, you can see that it's quite a bit longer. So again, this is a very phonics-based program, so all of these readers like are things that kids can actually sound out and decode, which I think is so good for early readers. Um, so we really enjoyed this program, definitely a hit for us. We did not quite finish all of level one this year, which is actually quite common. I didn't really know that going into it, but um, it's very normal not to finish level one in the first year. Level one usually takes most people the longest from what I've seen like in support groups and things. Uh, so we will actually be finishing level one probably in the fall, but overall really successful. My son has made a ton of reading growth and, and most importantly, he's really enjoying it and so am I. So that's what we did for reading. Um, and that's really that we did for the majority of our subjects, guys. That was our main, like, meat of our year. Um, but in addition to this, there was a few other little things that I did do. Um, for science and, like, social studies, I didn't really have a big plan to do a lot. I did um, pick up some unit studies from Little School of Smiths, and we just didn't end up really doing them. I, and it's nothing against those unit studies guys, honestly, I really love them. They were so cute. I love the activities in them and I can totally see myself using them with another child. But my eldest, who I was using it for this year, he's just not very artsy. He doesn't enjoy like crafts and projects and things like that. And he just, he hated it, honestly, he just wasn't into it. Um, and I wasn't gonna just sit here and force him to do something he really didn't wanna do. Um, so we just ended up dropping those pretty quickly. Um, but I think if you had a kid that was artsy and enjoyed that kind of stuff, those unit studies were really cute. I, as the parent, loved the look of them and loved the activities that were in them. So I think that those would be a great fit for somebody, but we just ended up not really using them. And so I kind of just dropped that this year. We didn't really do formal science or social studies this year, which I think is fine for kindergarten. We're gonna add some more stuff in next year for first grade, but for this year, we tried those unit studies and then just kind of dropped those. It didn't really add anything else in for science or social studies. Um, of course, we read tons of books in the library and stuff, but nothing for formal, uh, nothing for formal curriculum. So I did talk about for reading that I supplemented for some early readers. Um, one of the first things I picked up were these Bob books, and this is actually our first miss. Um, so I bought these because everybody recommended them. They were like, these are the books you need to go um, if you want more readers for the All About Reading. Um, and they are mostly phonics based, so I guess I understand why people recommend them, but I just was not impressed, guys. I know these books are like, everybody talks about them, but I just, I don't know, I wasn't impressed. Um, they are just very boring, like, they only have like two colors in them, like the pictures are just very simple. Um, and I also found that it didn't quite align with the program I was doing. Um, some of the words in here were kind of weird also, like I should have had it out to show you guys, but one of the, one of the stories in here has like the word okay, like O dot K dot, which I thought was weird because A, it's not phonetic and it's also not the way you spell okay. And I just, I don't know. I just felt like there were some weird words in here. It didn't quite line with the program like I wanted it to. And the stories were just really kind of dry and the illustrations were dry and I don't know. I just was not a fan of this and neither was my son. So this was a miss for us. Um, just FYI. Another miss for us with reading is I bought this Explode the Code book um, again because I've seen this recommended by so many people and I guess maybe just different kids like different things. So many people were like my kid loves this they just do it all the time independently they love it. My son did not love it um, and honestly neither did I. It was just it just wasn't really what I wanted it to be and I don't know maybe if I tried it again in a year or two um, 
you know, maybe it would be different, but at least for this year, this was a miss for us. We did not enjoy it. Um, don't plan to continue with it. I probably will hang on to it just because I have it, just in case, but um, at least for the moment, this was a miss for us. And then the last thing I want to talk about, guys, is our read-alouds. So I'm not going to share all of our read-alouds uh, this video because it would get very long. Uh, I plan to make a separate video for like good early read-alouds, but I did just want to mention that we did do a ton of reading this year um, of, of all kinds. One thing that I did want to mention is we did do some kind of character work, um, and this is a secular book. It doesn't really sound like it is, but it is. Um, it's called Molly and Gila's Adventures. It's a virtuous book for children. This was a great little character study for my son this year. It has little stories in it. And then at the end of the story, it talks about some of the virtues that were in the story. So it'll talk about like kindness, perseverance, reliability, um, which is just, it's just a good way to open up that conversation. I really love this book. I wish that they had more of them. Um, so this was great for like just an introduction to kind of character study. If you're looking for a non-religious resource for that, this was great. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was just two of our favorite read-alouds from the year. Again, I'll make a video showing all of our read-alouds, but I just wanted to share a few here. Um, one of our favorites was the Frog and Toad storybook favorites. If you have not read Frog and Toad, guys, I cannot recommend it enough. These stories are just so sweet. It's about these two neighbors that are friends and they, they get into little silly adventures together. Um, one of them's pretty grumpy. Um, and it's just, it's really a good, fun, fun read. And this is great for a first read aloud because it does still have illustrations, um, but it is a longer story. So it kind of gets them building up that stamina for read alouds. Other things that make good read alouds for young ages is reading young chapter books aloud. Our favorite this year by far were the Zoe and Sassafras books. These books are so sweet. If you have not read them, um, it follows this girl, Zoe. She is like um, a little budding scientist. Her mom's a scientist and they get into all these science adventures together with these magical animals that come to their home needing help. Very, very sweet. Um, it's also really great if you have a science-minded kid because um, it really models a lot of scientific processes and things like that. So it's really, really good reads. We've read almost all of them. I think we have maybe two left to read but they're fantastic, highly recommend. And that is it guys, that is all we have for our kindergarten year. I do plan to kind of share what we have picked out for first grade um, in the coming months, so make sure you look out for that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys in our next video. Bye.